Do you get a lot of emails or Slack messages or messages on WhatsApp about things you need to do, people you need to get back to, and do those things sometimes slip through the cracks? If so, this video is for you. My name is Peter, and I help people get more organized and to be more productive. In this video, I will teach you a three-step system for using OmniFocus to keep track of who you need to get back to when. So let's get started. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is step one, filter out things that you don't need to do. It's, you know, the number one productivity tip or productivity hack, right? Is simply do not do things. You've got plenty of stuff you could be doing or that you should be doing, but there may be things you can do, very easy things to lower the number of emails that come into your inbox or lower the number of messages you get on Slack. So let's say you're managing a team. You can ask your team members to reach out to you with questions once a day, save their questions to get to you once a day, right? Or you can ask them to spend a certain amount of time trying to figure this stuff out by themselves before they reach out to you. I don't know what your work context is, but that is step number one. If you're feeling overwhelmed by the amount of incoming emails, Slack messages, etc., just try and reduce the number of things that come in and you'll, have, you'll get more ROI out of that than from setting up the most amazing system in your OmniFocus. But let's assume you've already done that. Then we can move on to step number two. Step number two is actually getting those things you need to do, the emails you need to reply to, the messages you need to take action on into OmniFocus. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to make myself a little bit smaller so I can actually show you some things on my screen. There we go, okay. Let's use email as an example. I'm gonna open up my email app and I see that I have two emails that I'd like to do something with. It's this one on the bottom here and this one at the top here. The middle one is just something for me to read whenever I feel like it. I'm not gonna add it to my OmniFocus. And so I always suggest that you batch process your emails. So, you know, David Allen from Getting Things Done likes to suggest that if a task takes you two minutes or less, don't even bother adding it to your task manager. Just do it right now. And I agree with that, but only if you're batch processing your emails or messages. So what you don't want to do is be in the middle of an important task focused on it, and then you get a notification that there's an incoming email, and you think, oh, that'll be quick to respond to, and you do it, and it takes you one minute. And you may be thinking, ha, it took me less than two minutes, and I checked off that task. Yeah, but you also destroyed your focus on the thing that you were working on. And that's not the way to productivity. So I recommend that you work with focus for half an hour, an hour, two hours on one task, then step back, then go and batch process your emails, do them all together. So let's assume that you're doing that. If it's an email that's really quick for you to respond to, you know, less than two minutes, just go ahead and do it right now. Don't even bother putting that email into OmniFocus. But there are those emails, those messages that require you to take some action that will take more than two minutes. Okay, what about those? Well, I've got a good example here. I'm going on a road trip and I reached out to a company that does some guided canyoneering tours because I'd like to go on a guided canyoneering tour and I requested some information. They got back to me, but um, I don't think they quite got back to me, answered the questions that I uh, wanted answered. So I'd like to give them a call and ask for some more information. I think the call is gonna take more than a couple of minutes. So I just wanna make sure I add this task to my OmniFocus so that it gets done on time and that I get reminded of it. So again, step one is filter out those tasks that actually you don't need to do. Step two is get the ones that you do need to do and that are gonna take more than two minutes, get them into OmniFocus. So right now we're getting stuff into OmniFocus. Now there's a few ways to do it. Of course you can use quick entry, um, control option space. So I could create, uh, a task in my OmniFocus this way, and I like to do that. But when I'm working with email, sometimes I also like to use OmniFocus Mail Drop. OmniFocus Mail Drop allows me to forward an email such as this one, so I can go hit Command Shift F, allows me to forward an email like this one to a special email address I have with the Omni Group, and of course you can set this up too, which will automatically create a task in your OmniFocus inbox from this email. It's really handy. Um, I'm gonna assume you've already set that up. If you have not already set that up, you might like to check out my OmniFocus video course. It's called How to Set Up and Use OmniFocus 3 to Get Stuff Done. And I walk you through exactly how to have a nice OmniFocus system or workflow that allows you to get stuff done. And one of the things I do is I explain how to set up OmniFocus MailDrop 
The link to the course is in the video description below. So in this video, I'll assume that you've already got that set up. So I'll just actually type OmniFocus and then OmniFocus mail drop will come up here and I will forward this email. Um, then I can go ahead and archive this email if I want to, but I like to keep my emails in my inbox until I've actually completed the relevant action and then archive them. I also have got an email right here, which I would like to process. So I'm gonna say forward on that one as well. And I'm also going to type OmniFocus and send this one to OmniFocus mail drop. Boom. Now I'm gonna actually open up OmniFocus. I'm gonna to go to the inbox. I'm actually gonna go um, file sync now. You can also choose command S because it takes a little bit of time for those tasks to show up. There we go, there we go, there they are. Um, and so this is one way that you might, uh, other than quick entry, get the emails that you need to do something with into your OmniFocus. So again, step one was to filter out those things you don't need to do. Step two, get your tasks into OmniFocus. Now step three is what we're gonna do right now. Step three is to make sure that you give the uh, tasks all the characteristics, all the data in OmniFocus that they need for you to effectively do the tasks. What do I mean by that? We're going to assign a good task name. We're going to assign the task to a project. We're gonna see if we need to add any tags to it and see if we need to add any defer or due dates so that the task can sit inside your OmniFocus system and that so that OmniFocus can remind you at the appropriate time or show you at the appropriate time that you should be doing this task. This way you can completely rely on OmniFocus. You don't have to think, oh yeah, I was supposed to respond to that email. No, you can just go into OmniFocus and see that that is something that you have to do by a certain date that is coming up soon and then take action on it. So you don't have to keep things in your head, you're keeping things in your OmniFocus. That's the goal. But to reach that goal, we need to assign the characteristics of the task. So let's go ahead and do that right now. First of all, I always like to have some single action lists in my OmniFocus for things that I need to do to get back to people. So I like to have at least like a business folder and a home folder, and here I'm focusing on the home folder. Um, and I like to create a single action list and call it relationships, or you can call it personal relationships or whatever you want. And so you can see it's a single action list over here. So this is not a project per se, it's a collection of items that, a collection of tasks that you'd like to do at some point. But this is always gonna be around the single action list. It's not gonna ever get completed. That's why it's not a parallel or a sequential project, but rather a single action list. Anyway, what are we gonna do? We've got this task um, sitting in the inbox. And first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna give it, and this is the email about the canyoneering trip. So first thing we're gonna do is we're going to change the, the name of the task to be very precise and actionable. So a task name, and I have a video by the way on how to write good task names. So go ahead and check out that video as well. I'll put the link in the, in the description of this video. Um, I like to always start my task names with a verb. So I'm going to say call, and I believe they're called Red Desert Adventure. So I'm gonna say call Red Desert Adventure. Um, about guided canyoneering trip. And I'd like you to use at least this level of precision when you're naming a task. So when you are, if you're someone who gets so many emails, messages, etc., right, it can be difficult to remember later what this particular email or message was about. Right now, when you've just added the task to your OmniFocus, right, to respond to this message or email, it's fresh in your mind, you know what it was about, but maybe later today or tomorrow or next week or next month, you will not remember what it was about. So if you write a very clear task name, you'll immediately be reminded when you get to actually doing this task of what it is that you have to do. And you don't have to go back and reread the email and figure it out. So that's why it's so important to write a good task name. Start with a verb, in this case call, because I'd like to give them a call rather than emailing them and say what you're calling about, for example. Okay. I also would like to assign this to the uh, relationships project that I just created, so it's home relationships. There's a due date, I have to do this by August 30th. And now I've already assigned all of the key things. Some people will like to use tags as well. So for example, if you have a boss that you often talk to, you could create a tag in your OmniFocus specifically for your boss. Let's say your boss's name is Bob. So you could create a tag called Bob and assign it to any task in your OmniFocus that requires that you be near Bob or you know that requires that you talk to Bob to complete the task. And then when you're talking to Bob, you can go into your tags perspective 
click Bob and you'll see all of the tasks that require you to be near Bob so you can do them all at the same time. Some people like to do that and if you're one of those people, again, I explain or I demonstrate how to, to do this in my OmniFocus 3 video course. So you can go ahead and check that out in the video description below. Um, I'm not a big user of people-based tasks. Um, I find that they, uh, they take some time to set up and use, and I don't really get much benefit out of it, but I know other people swear by it. So this is up to you. But for me, this is enough. And uh, actually, if I move out of the inbox and back in, you'll see that this task that I assigned to a project is now gone. So let's go ahead and do the other one. Um, this, this task was someone who emailed me about my course. So I will say reply to, uh, I forget what her name was. Um, Stacy, reply to Stacy about um, my course. And that would actually not be a home project for me. That would be a, a business project. So I can go here and I can create a new folder and business. But since I'm focusing on the home folder, I won't do that for now. I'll just chuck it under home. Uh, I'll just reply. I'll just add it to a relationships. Boom. Okay. And uh, this is something that I don't need to do by a certain due date, but it would be good to get back to Stacy sometime soon. So I have a tag for that and it's called next. And I assign the next tag to tasks that I'd like to do soon, whatever that means. Um, and if you'd like to know how that works, you can check out one of my other videos as well, um, right here on YouTube. And there is a video called uh, setting up OmniFocus, I believe in 12 minutes. Uh, and I explain how to set up that next tag in this way to keep track of things that don't have a due date necessarily, but that you would like to do soon. So, okay, now we've filtered out the tasks that we don't need to add act on right away. So emails that we can ignore or what we need more info or whatever. Um, we've responded just quickly as we batch process our emails to those emails that take less than two minutes to act on. Then we added the ones that we are gonna do later or that take more time to OmniFocus. And then we've taken the time to assign the correct metadata to the tasks in OmniFocus. So we gave good task titles and we set a due date if we needed to. And that's the three-step system in OmniFocus that you can use to keep track of large volumes even of emails, Slack messages, whatever, whatever way that people are asking for your attention. Of course, the more incoming messages that you get, the more time it's gonna take you to put all of these things in OmniFocus. That's why it's so important to try and lower the number of emails that you get to begin with, right? Um, but this is a really neat way of doing it. And so the, the question that remains is, when are you actually going to complete these tasks? So. What I do is I do a weekly review every week. And in fact, if you'd like to do a weekly review as well, I have a free weekly review cheat sheet. It's free to get, and a lot of people say it's very handy, um, demonstrates the nine steps that are involved in a weekly review. And you can go ahead and grab that for free. Uh, the link is also in the video description below. Um, and during my weekly review, I'll notice that I have uh, a task coming up, for example, that's coming due. And then I may assign a next tag to that task, just the way that I did it to the other um, task. And that is sort of my way of saying, you know what, I intend to work on this today or maybe at least sometime in the next few days. So that's the way that I do it. So you don't necessarily have to reply to every email really fast, right? Um, it could just be something that you need to get back to at some point. And so then this is the way that I like to denote that. So it's just very important that you get all of your tasks into OmniFocus, that you give them the appropriate metadata, the appropriate title and the appropriate due date and stuff, and then trust the system. But then also have a moment when you're looking at all of the tasks that you could potentially work on and picking the ones that you'd like to work on today. That's a whole different topic though. I don't have time to teach you about that in this video. If you'd like to turn, uh, learn more about that again, um, my video course on OmniFocus is exactly what you need. So go ahead and check that out. So this is how I would use a three-step process to um, handle even large volumes of email or messages in OmniFocus. If you have any questions about this, how would I, how would you deal with X, Y, or Z? Uh, go ahead and leave those questions in the comments below. And if there are other things you'd like to me to see, create videos on to demonstrate how to do things in OmniFocus, let me know about that too. And I'll be happy to, to create videos on uh, what you're interested in. Finally, if you like the uh, video, go ahead and give it a like, subscribe to the channel. And uh, other than that, just have a great day.